Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Please open your Bible to the book of Genesis, chapter 32. The book of Genesis, chapter 32. While you're turning there, uh, just a quick announcement. I announced last week that today our English service would be in the SmileCon and then during the middle of the week Pastor Hiroshi said oh no you can use uh, the regular church sanctuary their original purpose was to pray here they wanted to have a prayer meeting here with a few other churches in the city in order to pray for the flute concert happening next, no, 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 excuse me, not the flute concert, uh, the Amazing Grace evangelistic event in May, and uh, that's happening now, actually. The, the prayer meeting is happening now. They shifted the place downstairs, and so the, the brothers and sisters are praying downstairs. So after the, this English service is finished, uh, they might still be praying, I'm not sure. It started at 2 p.m., so I don't know if we'll be able to have fellowship downstairs. But I know certainly next week we will be in the SmileCon. Next week. Don't come here. Go, come to the SmileCon. Because there will be a flute concert here. I know that that will not change. Okay. So uh, don't come here. Yeah. All right. I think that's all. Okay. So uh, we're in Genesis 32. Uh, 22 to 32, verses 22 to 32. Uh, I will read up until verse 26. Please join me at verse 27. I'll read 22 to 26. You read with me at 27 to 32. Let's read. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. And the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Let's read together. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. And therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Eric, please turn my mic down just, just a little bit. Thank you. So, uh, this is actually uh, part two of uh, just a short series I pre I'm preaching. Uh, the part one was three weeks ago. I preached on a very important part of Jacob's life, not part, but an event in Jacob's life where God introduces himself to Jacob. Sort of, hi Jacob, I'm God. And Jacob 
calls the place Bethel. Wow! This is the place I met God. This is the gate of heaven, the house of God. And that was a sort of a, a kind of beginning of Jacob's journey. And that is an important part to remember. I, I need to remem remind you of it because uh, this is back in Genesis chapter 29. And for those of you who were here, you remember that there was a sentence in that story that was very beautiful in its design and art. It said that the sun was setting on Jacob. The sun was going down. His world was getting dark, right? And so that is the place where the author is telling us Jacob is entering into the night season of his life. The night season. And I'll, I'll get back to that later on. But that's important to remember because we read just now, at the end of the story, we, would, we just read, the sun is now going to come up over his life. And so here, in this story that we just read, one of the greatest, most powerful stories of, a, of God changing the life of a man. Once again, I want to remind you, our theme this year at Mitaki Green Chapel is change. The subtitle being, I change, the world changes. Now please hear it correctly. It's not, I change myself. I, 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 I put forth an effort. I, I begin a new hobby. I stop doing certain things. I begin to do something more. No, that's not what we're saying. God uses those things to change us, but that's not how God changes. Do you know one of the ways most people read the Bible is they think of it like a textbook, an instruction manual, you know, B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth, right? Bible, B-I-B-L-E. It's like my textbook. If I study it enough, if I learn enough, if I read and memorize and, and you know, talk about, meditate, okay, I'll, I'll, my life will be better. I'll understand more. That's, that's good. That's a good way to read the Bible. If that's the only way you read the Bible, it's not the change. There's a change, there's a shift, but there's not a transformation. And w our theme is transformation this year. So a different way that you need to read your Bible is not just instruction or, or learning, you know. It's like this. It's a story. It's a story, a narrative. It's God made life to be a certain way. Made the world, made man, made you, made me. Perfect, beautiful, very good. And then the story is, we broke it. We messed it up. We, we, we crashed it. We had the car, the beautiful car, and we go, drove it out of the, the, the parking lot and boom, right into a tree. Nobody hit us. Nobody you know, chased us. We drove it into a tree and we broke it. And then the story of the Bible is God comes in to fix it. Not once, not twice, but again and again and again. And you read Genesis. If you read Genesis, it's the story again and again and again. Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, on and on and on. And from Genesis all the way through, the prophets, the Samuel, David, all the way through the New Testament, all the way to the end of Revelation, God changing it again and again and again. God's kindness, the riches of His patience and His tolerance leads us to change. Romans chapter 1. 
That's how we're changed, right? God changes us. Then God changes the world as he uses those who are transformed. Amen? So, that's here. It's happening in Jacob. This is the climax. This is the point in Jacob's story where there's no turning back and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it's so powerful that I'm afraid to preach this. I, I really am afraid to, to preach this because if I don't preach it right, we're not going to be changed. It's just another nice story. It makes us feel good. But if, if I've been studying it two weeks now, looking at it and thinking, wow, how can I teach this right? So Lord help us. So it begins, uh, Jacob is returning and what happens was he had left the country for his life here's what happened a major theme in Jacob's life is he's wrestling his name is wrestler Jacob uh, 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 what's the word he, he grabs the heel he's fighting who is he fighting he's fighting his brother all the time he's fighting his brother what for power what? For love. Whose love? His father Isaac's love. He's fighting uh, his brother for the, the rights of all the wealth of his family. And so what he does is he, he tricks them. He wrestles him. He, he fools them. And he gets it. But what happens is his brother now hates him. And his brother has promised to kill him. And he says, the next time I see you, you're a dead man. So he runs away. He runs to his uncle's country. And there, in his uncle's country, he finds his wife. And man, it's supposed to be good by that time. But no, it's another 20 years of up and down and a little bit up and down and down and down. And it's just crazy. Lots of drama, lots of craziness. So now he's coming back and God says, Get out of Laban's house, your uncle's house. Go back to your country. That's the land I promised to you. I'm going to give it to you. So Jacob takes all his family, all his servants, all his cows and camels and bulls and goats, everything, and he's coming back. And now, it's the day where he's going to meet his brother. The next day. And oh Lord, he's scared. He said, because what happens is some, some of his servants, they come and say, we saw your brother. He has 400 armed men coming to meet us. Okay? This is a small army. He's coming to meet us. And so Jacob, he's like, okay. So the, uh, chapter 32, the story is he divides them. Okay, I'll put half over here, half over here. If this one gets attacked, this one will escape. And then also, I'll divide them. So basically, I'll put some, some cows and some bulls up in front. And they'll say, this is a gift for Esau. And then next, I'll put some goats and some uh, 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 sheep. And he comes and, this is for you. This is a present for you. And next, I'll, I'll, I'll put some more, you know, camels and, and other and this is free and so by the time Esau meets him Esau will be ah oh, thank you for so he's still wrestling he's still trying to change the situation himself do you see that he's still manipulating nothing's changed he's still the old Jacob from 20 years before so now here's where we start to figure out how we can change First thing we need to see, in order for us to really, really be transformed, in order to really be having an encounter with the real God, is we see in verse, I think, 23, after he had sent them across the stream, he sent over his possessions. Verse 24, Jacob was left alone. You have to say that in your mind. Alone. He did. Alone. You have to meet God alone. That's the first step. Chris, what are you talking about? 
Well, let me give you some examples. Many people who come to Mitaki English service, they've come and they've returned to their home country. But when they came here, they were so happy to be here. They were so happy to be in a group, a Bible study. They were so happy to have prayer meetings and, and studies with certain people. And they had the kind of a group. Some of you have that now. You have a group. And then what happens is, maybe their contract finishes or they have to go back to their home country and they leave Mitaki and what happens? They can't find another church like Mitaki. And so they don't want to go to this church, they don't want to go to that church, and this group here is not like what we had in Mitaki. What happened? Or, some people... Maybe in their childhood, they grow up and they, they grow up and they go to church because their mother, their father, or their family, they go there. It's nice. The music's okay, you know, there's, there's friends there, and, and it's, it's a good experience. And then they graduate high school, they go to college, or they, they change jobs, they move. And in the second city, it's, it's not that good. And it's almost like, I don't really need God here. I'm kind of busy, I have a different group of friends. This church is not that great. Same thing. What's happening? What happened? Here's what happened. Same people who come to Mitaki and can't find another church when they leave. Same people who grew up in the church and can't go back to church after they graduate. Kyo hai, Kenzo. You need to calm down now. They have an experience with not God. They had an experience with religion. Their experience with God was not their own experience. Their experience with God was God's people. Do you see the difference? Maybe some of us here. We're here not necessarily because we have a relationship personally with God. We're here because we have a relationship with God's people. The music is good or, or great or, or there's a good group here or there's a Bible study, there's a prayer, there's people I relate to. People speak English, yes. And they, they have that connection, not with God, not with God, with the people of God. Now, that's not a bad thing, but that's not going to change you. Because if you want transformation, what you need is penetration. What many people have, what many people will be doing on their way to judgment is they'll have a nice time at church, but they'll never have, a, they'll never have the God of the church. Jacob was alone. He had no more family. He had no more friends. He had no more possessions. Listen, you are not the relationships that you have. You are not the possessions that you accumulate. You, a man is what he is when he is alone before God. That's what you are. That's what Jacob is. He's alone. Now, in a crisis in our life, why do we go to church sometimes? We go because we have a crisis, we, we have a problem, and we need God. And it's not nice to have it alone. And you know what? Let's, let's say that you have, I don't know, you have some kind of health problem. So, you know, it's nice. You go to the hospital. And people come to visit you. And even your family comes. And they're with you. And they, they hold your hand. And they don't leave you. And that's a nice thing. But eventually, even in the hospital, when they wheel you into that operation room, your family, your friends, they can't go into that operation with you. You have to go there by yourself, right? And the doctor has to operate on you. The God who's going to operate on your heart, he has to do it when you're alone. Otherwise, there's no change. But you know what? That's only the first step. There's another step that we need to find. And let's continue reading. He was alone, and a man wrestled with him till Daybreak. This is amazing. This is amazing. Why till daybreak? A man wrestled with him all night long. What's happening? When you're fighting with someone until the break of day, you know what that is? 
That's a fight for your life. For your life. Because you're doing one of two things. Either you're trying to get away, or you're trying to kill him who's trying to kill you. And so he's struggling for his life. For his life. Now, who is he fighting? This is amazing. Who is he fighting? You see the word there? Uh, uh, when the man saw, uh, uh, verse 24, a man wrestled with him. The, you see, in English, it doesn't come out very nicely. You kind of get the sense, but in the Hebrew, the original language it's written in, you really understand. The word wrestled in verse 24, that's the word Jacob. It's a play on the word, the name. Ja a man Jacobed with him until daybreak. Did you catch that? That is the theme of Jacob's life. He's a wrestler. He's been wrestling for his father's love, approval. He's been wrestling for his brother's power. He's been wrestling against Uncle Laban. He's been wrestling. And now, a man is wrestling him. Now, who's that man? Well, we figure it out at the end of the story. It's God himself, right? right? It says there. We read it at the end. God, Jacob was wrestling with... Wait a minute! Jacob was supposed to wrestle with Esau. That's the conflict. That's the Not with God. What's God showing him? God is showing him this. Jacob, your whole life, you think, you think the problem is your father. The problem is your brother. The problem is your wife. The problem is... No. No. You're a fool. Your problem is me. The fact that you don't have a relationship with me. You think you're going to get all the love that you need from your father. All you want is your father to say, Jacob, I love you just as, I much, as much as I love you, Esau. You think the problem is Esau. You want Esau to say, Jacob, you're my equal. I validate you as, my human, as a human being. You want... You think Rachel, the be most beautiful woman you have, you think her love will fulfill all of your, that hole in your heart. You think she's what you, you think Uncle Laban is the one who is between you and your blessing. You think he is the one oppressed. No, you're wrestling with me. I'm the one who gives you life. I'm the one who gives you love. I'm the one who gives you a life worth living. Do you get that? You're wrestling with me. If you don't understand that, we're going to go all night long. All night. That's how long it's going to take. And you know wrestling, have you ever wrestled? I haven't. My brother is a wrestler. My little brother, Brian. So he came to Japan. He's a high school student. You remember. And he came to my school. And he practiced on my school's, not wrestling team, the judo team which is like Japanese wrestling. Now, if you watch uh, like Japanese wrestling, like sumo wrestling, you know sumo wrestling. How long does that take? Yeah, one, two, three seconds, right? They do the thing here. The, the, the preparation for it, it takes five minutes, right? They're doing all this stuff. And, but then the actual fight, it's like five seconds, right? Why? Because wrestling is hard. In wrestling, here's what happens in wrestling, or in judo, or, yeah. Every single muscle from your head to your foot, your hands are all engaged. It takes all of it. It takes 100% concentration. That's one thing. And then the second thing in wrestling, not five seconds, not five minutes, not one hour, two, it, just three minutes of wrestling, that's hot, that, you're sweating, you're, you're just, you just want to die. I've wrestled my brother just for fun. And I thought he was going to kill me. I really did. Because he's just, you know. And all of my body was like, whoa. And he's smaller than me. Jacob is wrestling all night. He's agonizing. Agonizing. Because this is the fight for his life. What is it that you're wrestling with? 
What is it that you're Jacobing with? What is it that you think will finally give you the blessing that you need, but really it's him? He's trying to show you something. What is that? What is it? If you don't find it, there's not going to be no change. No change. You have to meet God alone. You have to, conf you have to conflict with God. Now, I, I just need to go just a step to the side for just a minute, okay? This is just to help us uh, answer some people uh, who don't believe in God or who think God is something different than what he is, okay? Some people say, uh, God would never contradict me. I believe God is all loving, always accepting, always kind and gracious. That's not the God over here. This is the God that grabs you by your shirt and was willing to put you down. And even at the end of the story, this is the God that will break your leg. Is that the God that people like to talk about? No. Or there's another type of person. Here's another type of person. This is the church person. I believe if I do everything good, if I do everything right, if I believe the right things, if I go to the right church, if I'm the right kind of person, God will never hurt my health, take away my family. God will only bless me and give me good things and, and, and make me the head and not the tail and, and, uh, inc and make me increase. In God is wrestling. God is pinning. God is breaking. God is wrenching. This is not the God who always agrees, who always blesses, who's always there to bring you forward and not. This is a dangerous God. There's a humility there that we need to have because God will, will conflict with us. Look, if, if God is not someone you ever wrestle with, that's not the real God. <laughs> that's a God you made, right? Right? If God is something that's always going to do what you want or, or meet your expectations and never ask you to do something you don't want to do, that's probably not God. It's probably not God. God. God will conflict. If you meet that God, hallelujah. The one who will, the one who will take the finger and point it right between your eyes, if you meet that God, you're blessed. Because he's coming to you. So, meet him alone. He's wrestling with you. Let's keep going. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, that his hip was wrenched, and, it, and, and, uh, and he wrestled as he wrestled with the man. This is an amazing part. This is the last point. Okay? There's a strange uh, 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 contrast here. Really strange. The contrast is, how do you win a wrestling match? How did Jacob win? This is amazing. Because it says God could not overpower him. God, omnipotent power, could not overpower Jacob. What, what is going on here? And in fact, God has to say, are you going to let go? Are we finished? What? How does that happen? This is amazing. Amazing. Do you see the, the, the weird thing here? It's strange. How does Jacob win? He wins by losing. How does God win? God wins by losing. Let me show you how. There's a word there. It says that the man touched Jacob's hip. And it broke his hip. It does not, the word in Hebrew does not say the man smashed his hip. It does not say the man kicked his hip. It doesn't say, the, you know when you tap your, your smartphone or your tablet, that word touch, that's what he did. Yeah, that's the word in Hebrew. He 
touched his hip. Yes. Yeah. And that one little touch changed Jacob's life literally. Just the way he walked. What is he saying? Jacob understood at that very moment he was not wrestling with a man. Because that kind of power, right? That's only God power. So Jacob realized, I'm wrestling with God. And even God gives him a hint. The reason why we read, there's a part where it says, let me go because why? Why does he say, let me go? The sun is going to come up. He's giving Jacob a hint. He's saying, if the sun comes up, you're going to, right now it's dark. You see my outline. You don't see my face. It's dark. You can't, there's no light. You can only see my outline. That's enough. Because if the sun comes up and you see my face, you're done. What happened to Moses? Do you remember Moses in, in Exodus? Moses said, God, let me see your face. And God says, Moses, I'll tell you what. I'll let you see the back of me. And in fact, in order for you to see the back of me, I'm going to put you into the corner of this mountain, under this cave. You, you st and I'm going to walk by. Okay? And it's raw wind and crazy thunder. And, and he walks by. And, and then... I'm going to tell you, you can look. And at, he said, Moses, you can see just my exhaust fumes, kind of, right? My haikigasa. And that was enough. Why? Because if God is holy, he's righteous, he's just, if you see his face, you're dead. So God is saying this. He's saying, I came to you, Jacob, weak. I came to you in weakness. I came to you not showing my whole power. Are you seeing where I'm going? When I wrestle with my sons, here's what I do. I stand up on my two feet and I jump up and I pound them. No, I don't do that, okay? All right, I don't do that. When I wrestle my sons, I get down on my knees and I, I don't go all out, I just kind of, you know, and I let them come to me. Why? Because if I put all 95 kilograms on top of them, I will literally crush them to death, right? They're dead. It would be fun, but it wouldn't be good for them, all right? <laughs> right? I have to come to them in we, I have to hide my power. And by, by hiding my power, they can have an encounter with me. God came to Jacob in weakness because if God came to Jacob in power if he won he would lose Jacob but if he lost to Jacob then he could win Jacob did you see that the way that Jacob could win was he lost God wounded him God crippled him God hurt him and by losing, that's how he won. What happened? God touched his hip. Jacob understood, this is, this is God. This is the God of the universe. This is the God who, who is doing all this. So now, what does Jacob do? He's no longer wrestling. In the very next sentence, Jacob is no longer wrestling. He's finished because he understands, oh, I get it, God. It's you. The blessing is not the cattle. The blessing is you. The love is not the love from my father Isaac. The love is you. The praise is not from my, the, the praise from my brother. The praise is you. He understands that now. And so now, what does he do? He stops wrestling. He starts clinging. What does it say? Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go. I'm, I'm holding on now. I can't, I can't pin you down. I don't have more, more power. I'm just going to hold on. Why? Because I need you. You are my life and my blessing. I need you. And so now he's clinging on to God. 
and he won't let go until God blesses him. So how does God bless him? Does he give him more cattle, more donkeys, more goats, more bulls? Does he give him more children? Does he give him a brother? Well, that's all part of it. But ultimately, what's the blessing? Let's go to the next verse. The man asked him, what is your name? Gives him a new name. Abraham. You will no longer be called Abram, but now you'll be called Abraham, the father of many. Right? I'm giving you a new name. I'm giving you a new identity. Because you wrestled with God and man. And you won. You won. You won by losing. Hallelujah. Do we need, does anybody here need to finally lose before they can finally win? That's all I'm getting at. Have you been trying to win? Not understanding that it is in losing that you win. How is it that God can bless Jacob? Well, here's what happened. How is it that Jacob could not be destroyed even though he saw God's face? Here's what happened. God didn't put all his weight on Jacob because it would crush Jacob. You know what God did? He put all his weight on his son, Jesus. And it crushed Jesus. And by crushing Jesus, he can bless Jacob. Did you see that? Did you see that? Jesus on the cross took the full weight of God's power, wrath, judgment. So that we who stand under the cross can receive the full blessing of Jacob and Jacob's greater son. Jacob got a blessing at the risk of his life. Jesus gave us the blessing at the cost of his life. Jesus, the greater Jacob. Jacob wrestled all night with God until he could get the blessing. I will not let you go. Jesus wrestled with God in the garden of Gethsemane. And finally he said, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus lost so that we could win. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen to that. There is no greater love. There is, look, nothing will change you. Nothing will transform you or me until we understand that that cross was what allows us to change. Because through that cross, even though it will cripple us, even though we walk out not walking the same, that's everything we need for God to finally bless us. It was through the greater son, through the greater Jacob. So my invitation is always, in your heart, even right now, even right now in your heart, cherish Jesus. Not Jacob, Jesus. In your heart, worship Jesus. Bow to Jesus. If you have to wrestle with him, stop wrestling and just cling to him. And how do you go from using God for your blessing, how do you go from that to actually Letting God be your blessing. It's very simple. Very simple. You sing with all your heart, my Redeemer lives. You sing with all your heart, how great the Father's love for us. And you sing with all your strength, all of it. Jesus, my all in all. Amazing love. How can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love. I know it's true. And it's my joy, my blessing to what? To honor you. Come to Jesus. Come to the cross. Let's pray. Yes, Lord, I pray that you would open the eyes of our heart and give us strength in our hands to see Jesus and to not let go until we get to the new name the new name, the, the name of the son, the name of the daughter, the name of the, the one who is saved. 
Help us by your spirit. Help us, Lord God, because we desperately need this. In Jesus' name, amen.